Hi, I'm Spike Ferriston. I was a staff writer on Late Night with David Letterman and Late Show with David Letterman from 1990 to 1995. And here are some of my favorite clips. One of the clips from Late Night with David Letterman that really blew my mind when I was in college, that really spoke to me, it was uh, Dave uh, wondering what life in the United States would be like without the Constitution. I remember then when I came to work for Dave, I went, you know, <laughs> the few times I spoke, my favorite thing that I ever saw was this. And he goes, yeah, I didn't really care for that. And I went, <laughs> Uh, you know, today is, of course, the 200th birthday of our Constitution. 200 years ago today, it was ratified in Philadelphia. There were parades and celebrations, and I, and I think that it's great that 200 years after the fact, we as Americans, a nation of Americans, can celebrate together this wonderful event. The fact that 200... Yes, Anton? Isn't the Constitution just some old document in a museum? Ho, 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 ho! Anton, no, no, you couldn't be, you couldn't be more wrong about that. It's as important today as it was the day it was written. You know, I, I hate to think what life would be like without the Constitution. So, uh, Dave, let yeah. me get this straight. Right. Um, without the Constitution, We'd all be ruled by gigantic evil rats. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Constitution really is a great document. It certainly is, Anton. In 86, I was an intern on the show, and GE suddenly bought NBC, and the culture of NBC changed overnight. Suddenly, you had to requisition office supplies. And I remember asking somebody I was working for, what's going on? They said, well, it's going to be, it's going to be like a real company now. And boy, that thought was, uh, really depressing to me. Then I saw this clip of Dave going to meet his new bosses, and I felt a whole lot better. Just go on in. I'll just go on in and see what happens. Hi, how are you? I'm Dave Letterman. Nice to meet you. Right, I'm, what I'm is your name? I'm going to ask you to turn the cameras off, please. Okay, we just wanted to drop I'm off this a basket you. of fruit. Okay. Would you cut the cameras, please? It's a gesture of goodwill. Would you cut the cameras, please? We'll have to talk to the director right over there. Mr. Gurney. Just, uh, director, uh... This next clip, Again, it's kind of uh, what uh, made me want to be a comedy writer. Uh, <laughs> just the, the, the strangeness of it. This was a, supposed to be a tribute to our troops, except somehow there was a giant hot dog in the tribute. That was it. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to drop out of music school, and I wanted to go right for this show. Anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. Tom, Derry, get your gear, you sail at break of day. We know you'll serve your ship with skill and pride. And the whole late night gang in spirit will be right there by your side. Being in college and uh, wanting desperately to be a part of that show, Chris Elliott was always a way in for me. I always really identified with him because he, he didn't look like the classic comedian I had grown up with, the polished comedic actor, the Jerry Lewis's. He was just a guy kind of like me, a little older, and he would come on and do a weird, inspired comedy. Guy Under the Stairs, what more do I need to say? Uh, also, my thanks to uh, Chris Elliott. Chris, uh, that was just terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, very nice guy. Chris, uh, you know, when you, when you look at uh, your appearances on the program and uh, everybody seems to love them, do you have any idea why they're so successful? I really don't. I'm just very happy that they are, and congratulations yeah. on your anniversary. Well, thank you very much. You know, now, now, Chris, I had kind of an idea why they're so successful. You know, I think it's those, I think it's those silly little costumes. Silly little costumes? <laughs> yeah, you know, the little stuff you put on your head and so forth. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right, Dave. I guess talent has nothing to do with it. <laughs>
Now, now, Chris, I, I didn't want to get into this. You know something, because... mister? <laughs> One of these days, I might just have to knock the wind out of your sails. <laughs> but until that day, I'll be right here, making your life a living hell. <laughs> watching you, watching everything you do. If I see that damn Alka-Seltzer suit again, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> Some of the more heartwarming, amazing memories have to do with uh, Johnny Carson. You know, there was a lot of stuff outside the show. I remember we used to come out here for the Emmys and uh, we'd go out to some fancy restaurant in Malibu. Suddenly Johnny would walk in and cover the whole tab for what, like a hundred people? <laughs> Just throw down his Discover card and buy it. And it, really amazing moments like that. But one of them was captured on the show and that was after Dave didn't get The Tonight Show he did get Johnny. All right, tonight's top ten list from the home office in Sioux City, Iowa. Now, oh, this is not the list. Johnny, can I have the top ten list? What's the point? I had this great office at 30 Rock and it looked out onto a rooftop garden that had uh, interesting small trees and a pond and we used to do these staff talent remotes and one was coming up and I thought, well, why don't I buy a fishing pole and why don't I see if I can cast from my window into the pond? This was the third take. Uh, we played it like the first, but this was the third take and after two, I was sweating bullets because I wasn't sure I could make it. Dave bet me $100 before we started shooting that I wouldn't make it. I still have that $100 bill framed. What are you going to do here, Spike? What do you have of interest for us? I have a uh, pocket fisherman, collapsible mm -hmm. fishing pole. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to cast into that goldfish pond out there in the roof garden. All right, here we go. Plenty of risk. It's all on the wrist. Not even close. Yes! Oh, man. Jeez, I need a new prescription. I came up with an idea once, Arnold Schwarzenegger's least popular movie lines, read by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I remember going down to Arnold's uh, dressing room with Daniel Kellison, who was segment producer. I started going through uh, the numbers, uh, 10, what a lovely lace doily, except I read it like Arnold. I went, number 10, what a lovely lace doily, and Arnold wasn't laughing, and behind him, Kellison was going, don't do that. Number 10. My, what a lovely lace doily. <laughs> Number nine, ow, a paper cut. <laughs> Number eight, man oh man, I love fudge. <laughs> Number seven, when I think about you, I touch myself. This next clip I'm very proud of, and I'll be completely honest with you, when I got uh, hired on the show as an intern and as a writer, this was all I was thinking about was to be able to do something like this. Hey, Spike, how are you? Hi, Dan. What do you got going on? Just step aside. Just drop this bowling ball in a bathtub full of pudding. All right, a bowling ball into a bathtub of pudding. Now, when you're, when you're done with that bathtub of pudding, put it back in my dressing room. OK. Here we go. Regulation bowling ball. Seven floors down, bathtub full of pudding. Ow. Ow. 
<laughs> Just wide to the right. All right, you got another one? Spike, load up and try it again, buddy. Here we go. Trying to pick up that spare now. Oh. Spike, Spike, are, are you taking into consideration the rotation of the Earth? I will now. Try it again, sir. Here we go. Yeah! Anytime Dave got into a uh, fast food drive through restaurant window where he was controlling things with a headset, that stuff is gold. Hello? Yeah, we get a uh, number three. Number three? Yeah. What else? Uh, you, sound, you sound like you're having trouble making up your mind. Are you all right? I'm all right. Everything all right at home? Everything all right with your family? Yeah. Everything all right at work? Yeah, it's going to go right to work. <laughs> yeah, you sound just, you know, like a little depressed or something. <laughs> yep. How old are you, sir? <laughs> uh, 30. 30? Yeah. Uh, and you're pretty much happy with where you are in life? <laughs> it's a number three, all right? All right, we'll get you a number three, but I'm, you know, I'm more concerned about you. Do you have a clergyman you could talk to? Uh, is it ready? Is it going to be ready or what? Yeah, the food's ready. Sure, the food will always be ready. Are you ready? Okay, all right. I had written, I don't even remember what this was. It might have been, um, it might have been a viewer mail. But the joke was Dave was going to take a car battery and he was going to take the jumper cables and he was going to put one jumper cable on this ear and one jumper cable on this ear and then somehow that would shock him back to life. And when we were rehearsing it that afternoon, Al Mar, the stagehand, <laughs> brought out the car battery and I watched him hook it up and Dave grabbed one electrode and I said, hey, stop for a second, Dave, and just put those two together just to make sure that's a dummy battery. Well, guess what? It was not a dummy battery and he went and it sparked. He went, oh, Jesus, Al. And I went, holy shit. <laughs> Al Mar almost killed Dave a second ago. Uh, whose diet is better, Regis, of course, our good friend Regis, or has, I guess he got a diet plan, Regis, yeah. you know, or Kathy Lee. Uh, fan who'd like to drop a few pounds, Betsy Vitek, uh, Houston, Texas. I used to weigh 205 pounds, and I said to myself, I have got to lose some weight. And I'm telling you, I don't know if Regis's diet plan works. I don't know if Kathy Lee's diet plan works. I'm telling you, the only way I know how to lose weight is the way I lost it. Here, I'll share the secret with you. It's uh, simply just some kind of aversion therapy. Here's all you need to do. You just get yourself, you just get yourself a table and a napkin and a bowl of soup, and then you get a 12-volt auto battery. Put it right up there. You take, you take one of them, you hook it right up to your, well, I hooked it up to my ear. And then, then you take the other one and you hook it up to your soup spoon, and then just enjoy. Just eat a sensible dinner, just like this. That's all. Awesome. Ah! 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 It's a little something Mr. Wizard taught me. Yes. <laughs> Actually illuminated your and exoskeleton the, when, yeah. it, when it went on. And the pounds just melt off. Mm, man. This next clip is about me, and forgive me for showing it to you, but it really is the moment that I decided that I would work in entertainment. My roommate at Berkeley College of Music got tickets to The Letterman Show. And I bet everybody on the dorm floor that not only uh, would I go to this show and have a great time, that I would get on the show. Before the show began, the stage manager said, is there anyone from Canada here? We're going to be singing O oh, Canada. And I raised my hand just like that <laughs> and said, I'm from Canada. And when the show started, Dave said, those Canadian guys, can you come on down? And if you watch very closely, I'm only on for a split second, but I win a lot of money in that split second. And after getting hired, I lived in fear for five years as a writer, hoping that they would never see the clip of me storming the stage <laughs> because I was a super fan and probably a scary super fan. 
And I also seem to be dressed like Ellen DeGeneres in the 80s. I tell you what, the, the people from, yeah, the guys from Toronto and the man from Montreal and somebody else come down here. We gotta pass out the lyrics. We're gonna sing O Canada tonight if it kills us. No, no, you're, we're not going up back up there. Go pass them out, pass them out. Man thinks we're doing his life story. There you are. Here, divide him with your friend. Make sure everybody gets one. Pass them out, okay. All right, now Paul's gonna help us here. Paul, are you, are you gonna do this? Yes, now this is, we're doing this again because it's one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites. It's, it's, it's a rousing a, anthem. It's a rousing anthem. Oh, Canada, our hope and native land. True patriot love in all our sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. And stand on guard, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, Dave and Paul were tied to a stake while a giant rat in a purple satin gown whips him. Oh, I do remember. <laughs> I remember that. Again, another one where Dave said, yeah, I didn't care for that. It's if you could do it based on the, what's in the newspaper and the, I, what? Then, Barbara, I did the job. Then I was behind the desk for three years at Fox and I totally understood everything he was saying. I want my audience in front of me laughing and I need it kind of based on real stuff. And I was like, oh boy, here I go, full circle again. Yeah.